So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this uh, webinar for library management in Codices. My name is Katarina Heining, and for the next 30 minutes, I will now be your host. So, for the next 30 minutes, I have the pleasure of actually showing you, to go through with you, what is library management, according to us here at 3S, some general guidelines for creating libraries, and then, of course, why are we doing libraries? Well, of course, to, to create some documentation, and for that we also have a few guidelines. Then uh, we want to see this live uh, with some few examples in Codices on how to best do this, how to get started. And uh, after that, I want to give you a little bit of a preview for our advanced webinar on how to create the online help because um, our goal for creating the documentation is also that it could be then available directly in the online help uh, in Codices. And uh, at the end, we will do a little bit more of a summary and uh, go through where you can see and find more information about this topic. Okay, I think we're ready to start. So, what is library management? Well, first of all, libraries are collections of reusable objects. So, for example, POUs, functions, function blocks, uh, it can be interfaces, data unit types, global variables or text lists, pictures, cam tables. And actually, for most developers, libraries uh, should be a standard object in a project. However, unfortunately, we have few users, so with this we want to encourage um, actually everyone who's using Codices to also do library management properly and also do, uh, documentation properly. Following on, for including a library in a project, library's module can be used in the same way as other defined POUs and variables. It's actually nothing different here. And uh, you can also reference other libraries in order to extend the pool of available objects, and that's quite useful. And how we, use, how we do this in Codices is that it's the so-called library manager, and uh, that one is managing the libraries in a project. And uh, they are installed in the system via the library repository dialog, and we're going to have a look at it further on. The basic type is .library, however, there are some protected library types due to the source code not being uh, accessible any longer. So for interface libraries, they may not generate source code. We have the LTIFs. For container libraries, they can only include documentation and library manager. And the function here is to compile other libraries. That's why it's also a protected library. And for distribution and deployment, so if you want to share your libraries, of course, you should use a compiled library. And that's more of an advanced function. And so what are the benefits for good doc documentation and library management? Why, why are we talking about this and why should I use it? Well, first of all, this is a perfect way of protecting your code. Another point is it's easy for you to share it with other users by using a correct and proper library management. And other benefits uh, that is actually, if you look at resourcing, you can have multiple programmers working at the same project and they can, same, they can share the same information and they sort of know what, what uh, each one of them are doing at the same time. And through that, you can then minimize repeated work so that, you know, if you have proper documentation, you don't have to do the same thing twice. And uh, through that, you, you save resources. So there are many good reasons for, for doing good documentation. Now, however, there are some rules to follow in order to avoid inconsistency problems and also to support our poor users who are going to use our libraries at the end of the day. And so we really want to encourage everyone to apply the following rules when you're creating or referencing or basically managing your libraries or creating documentation. So let's uh, jump start to, uh, to those general guidelines. The first main item is that um, we definitely wanted to define a meaningful library name. And in our world of business, we tend to use abbreviations and shortings and everything for, for our files. But think about maybe the end users who might not know this. So try to use a meaningful name that really describes what this library is about. And avoid a dot in your naming of the project or in the library because otherwise the file will be saved as a dot project instead of a dot library file. 
I'm going to show you this later on in Codices. Use templates in order to gain consistency, and uh, we provide you with a few templates, but you can also go ahead in Codices and create your own templates that fits your business. And uh, also use a familiar and as far as possible consistent project structure. And this is, is very important when you're working with multiple users on a project because uh, otherwise it can be a bit confusing if it, every time you're opening a new library file it looks, it looks different. It will take your time to get familiar with it and find the right things. So it's just, um, it's just easier. Then when you are uh, so far that you're going to define your new library, we recommend that you register in Worldwide Unique Library Namespace. This is actually not only something we recommend, it's required. And you do that very easily by contacting our own registry. And we will then be managing this for you. Uh, so libregistry at codices.com is a simple email address where you same, send this uh, namespace to. And, of course, when you open and start your new project file or library file, uh, use the following information, add title, version, and company. And we also recommend to define a category for your library. And this is optional, of course, but it is very helpful because later on when you're searching, searching in your library manager, it's not just as automatically gets saved into miscellaneous, uh, but you can actually find it under the proper category and it goes faster to search for it. We also encourage to use correct way of referencing other libraries and how to do this and how it works you can find in our online guide and also design usable external internal interfaces and also to, to again help our poor end users implement a user friendly error handling. Uh, this will save you time and it will save the users time because then they don't have to maybe always contact you directly but they can actually find the information themselves. Use the correct method for protection for deployment and I mentioned it before we do that through compiled libraries. Follow a naming convention for getting clean code. Don't jump around trying to be consistent. This is also following the uh, recommendation of the, the right naming convention and um, and for not or for avoiding abbreviations. And when you're working on an existing library and you know that you are different users, look after the interface compatibility to previous versions so that you're not um, working on the wrong one. And for that, then, of course, use different version numbers for each library when you are maintaining a project. Okay, I think that was enough of theory for, uh, for now. Let's go ahead now and have a little look uh, in Codices on how we can actually follow these general guidelines. I have now opened an instance um, of Codices. It's a SP6, so our latest service pack. And I start with opening a new project, and since we're going to create a library, I go into the category library, and I am using a codices library, and now we're coming into the name uh, naming convention, and I'm going to call this webinar 27 basically because it's today's the 27th. And I'm not putting in a dot or anything in here in the name because then it's not going to be saved as a library, it's actually going to be saved as a project. Press OK. I have to do a little bit of a pausing session here while Codices is thinking. And of course, um, libraries are something that is going to be applied generally in a project and not just for specific devices. That's why I opened the view for POUs because here is where I want to uh, work. Uh, I don't want to be device specific. Now, I go into my project information. That's the first thing to fill out. Here you have the three main points that are very important. Company, title of your library. Now, I'm going to call it um, Webinar 27. And the version, well, I'm working on SP6, so I leave it for now. 
The other thing we talked about was categories, library category. I don't want this one to end up in miscellaneous. Um, so what you can do is that you can go ahead and, and basically remove those categories that you don't like, and then you can add a category. And we have already some specified categories provided in this XML file. Um, if you don't open this file through codices, but actually directly from your installed link here, you can find some other very useful information in this file. Now, of course, I don't want to use all these categories, and for the sake of it, I'm just going to go in and use application as my, as my preferred category. And the reason why I'm choosing application today is just because it starts with an A, and the list is then pretty much on top when I'm searching for it later on. Okay. Properties, then, a few things to think about. The first thing is uh, check that your documentation format is restructured text. It's the standard format for creating documentation. This is not something that we in 3S um, are saying. It's basically the standard format for documentation in general as a guideline. Now, this one has already been entered here for me, so I don't have to uh, worry about it too much. The other thing is um, for the placeholder, go in and create another value for it in your template, otherwise it might be able, to, it might look a little bit funny. And uh, I'd basically provide a new value which is linked to my name Katarina and then value for placeholder. Uh, and I go on modify. Okay, those were the, the first few things that we uh, had to do in our new project. The next thing I'm actually going to do is uh, we're, let's provide a little bit of documentation. The first thing I do is that I add a new POU. I will call it my POU and I leave it in as a function block. The next thing I do is that I start to create a little bit of documentation. So this function block provides, and then I'm going to add a little bit of text here, so bear with me for a second. Um, sorry, I'm a bit too fast here. Uh, Face. Mm, oh, nice. T. Okay. Now, the other thing I'm going to do is that I'm actually going to fill this with some input. So, I increment, and that's going to be an integer. I put in another one that I called an X. Count up, and that one is going to be a bool variable, and I'm also going to have some output in this documentation, and I counter, for example, which I also put as an integer. Now, I'm not going to generate any code for you here today. Uh, you're probably far better application writers than I am, so uh, just uh, leave it like that for now as we're focusing just in the editing window. The most important thing after you're done with finishing your little bit of uh, documentation that you've done is to go on this button here on the top, uh, save project and install into library repository. So I go ahead and do that, I press that one. Uh, normally when you're creating documentation and working with library managers, you have two instances. The one item is the library manager that, uh, the library documentation at itself, and another one is where you're writing your application. So I'm starting a second instance of Codasys here, and that's going to be a project that is going to be a standard project, and here I'm going to call it, and this is back to the naming convention that we talked about, I'm using the same uh, name now for my project file so that I can find it easily and link it between the two. Uh, between the two um, items. So I call it Webinar 27 and Standard Project. And I leave it in as a function block that works well for me for today. And now that Codices has opened, I go into the Library Manager, which I said is where we now are managing our libraries, and I go into Add Library. So coming up here, and I saved it under application, and I saved it as webinar 27, and as you can see, I found it then pretty fast up here. If you have a hard time finding your 
your library, it might be more here under advanced search or display advanced libraries. So that's also a good way to look at in case you can't find it directly here in the first window. Now, I did find it here, so I just double click on it. It's called KLT. Uh, that's the placeholder name that I created. We already see that there are some documentation being created. I can even go into my POU, double click on that one. Let's see if I can get the window up here. And as you can see, it has already created a bit of information. And it says function block my PU. It's a good interface with a nice functionality. And I also see my two variables and the outputs that I got from those variables created here. OK, very good. So that's our first start. Let's go back to the PowerPoint presentation. So here we are. The next thing we're going to talk about is the guidelines for library documentation. We did a little bit of it, but there are also a few guidelines to think about here. But first of all, why would we put effort into documentation? Well, it's a little bit the same as when we talked about why put effort into library management. Documentation tells people that this project is for them. And if people don't know why your project exists, and if they don't know how to install it or install your code, or if they can't figure out how to use your code, they simply won't use it or have a very hard time using it. So documentation is basically for your end users to, to survive in your application and, and get proper help and support so that it's easier for them. And I think uh, many of us have had this experience where you're sitting and you just got a project archive from a friend or something, uh, you're opening it up and you're thinking, what has he or she done here and why? So that's one main reason for actually creating good documentation. There are many other reasons. Uh, preventative, you reduce support with accurate documentation. It saves you time. It saves your resources. And it's also for redundancy. If you have staff turnover or you know, you're changing your project, it ensures that the know-how know is retained and that the successor has a vertical startup. It also should provide an overview of a concept of a certain library, and it also helps you save time and resources if the functions that you have in your application have a correct description. And also, for error handling and error messaging, um, it, it saves a lot of uh, maybe on-hand support that you don't need to provide if you actually have a very good documentation for error handling. It, it helps the user for themselves to do the root cause analysis, so simplifies for the users. So, and for an advanced uh, version of this also, the documentation must be designed in a way so that, it's, so that the online help works properly in the application. Because how we have uh, structured codices is that if you do a proper documentation, you can also be able to find it directly in your online help. And uh, I'm going to show you later on now in the presentation what that looks like. So it should ensure that a complete and accurate presentation of the interfaces and your parameters and their descriptions is available in, in the library manager. That's, uh, that's the reasons. So how do we start? Well, um, I'm not going to show you all of that today. but. One help is that you create a README file, uh, and in that one you should answer a few questions. You should decide on who's your audience. Uh, most of the times that will be users and developers, so what type of documentation do they need? What's the purpose and the features of your application? What makes it different from other applications? Please, please, please include installation instructions and a link to your code and to your issue tracker. Provide them a list of good frequently asked questions questions, and also how they can get support, and, and maybe how also users can contribute, because many times you have some pretty smart people out there who uh, can come up with better ideas of improving maybe your application. And uh, also at the end, don't forget, forget your project's license. So, very good. Now I talked a lot. Let's get down to business and do a little bit more documentation in Codices. And I'm going to do two, two things. We're going to add a table and uh, we're going to add an image. So I'm going back to my instance that I opened before, my library instance. And the first thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to create another object. That's the POU. And now I will actually basically call it my table and it's going to be based on a function so I need an integer and function block diagram that that fits 
and I just add it in here. Now, since I don't have a lot of time, I'm going to do a little bit of a pre-cooked version here. So I'm adding some text, a function with a table. And then I have actually prepared something in the background so that this table is showing up correctly. Uh, because otherwise you're going to see me sitting here typing a lot. And what you can see here is that I already pre-printed basically the table. A few watchouts here. When you do create the, the table in this way, watch out that the lines are over each other and you have the right amount of uh, functions and um, and minuses in between and that the distances are correct, otherwise your table is not going to show up correctly. The other thing we're going to do is I'm going to add a bit more text. Return uh, special oops you regarding I value. And of course, inside of my var input, I'm going to have value called as an integer. OK. Now we do hope that this is going to work. Again, I press the Save Project and Transfer. Looks like Codesys is working pretty fast there. So I'm going back to my project file. I click on it. It has already happened there. My table, I can see it. Yeah, to remove that one again. I also even got a um, a little function here, and in my documentation uh, here, I have to be a bit more patient. Sometimes uh, it takes a bit longer. Let me see if I can. Yeah, it's coming here. It was just a bit slow. And there are actually two ways to go to your documentation inside of this file. And as you saw here, I just clicked on up here, and I go into my table here, and then it also shows up. Um, and you can see that also even the items that I added into the text is, came out automatically. So, very good. The second thing I'm going to add was a picture. So I go back to my library. The first thing I do here is that I need to add a folder, which I call image. I need to fill this folder, of course, with an image. So I go in, I add object, and I go into external file. My file path, let's see if I have any nice uh, images saved. Sorry. And Codus's logo is always thankful to use. And here, a little watch out. When you're adding a picture, make sure that you have the full correct name, otherwise it is not going to find it. Very important, embed into project and click on add. Very good. Uh, after I've done that, I'm going to go in and add another POU, which I'm going to call my picture. And this time we call it, leave it in as a function block. And now we come to a bit of a tricky bit. And that's of adding the picture and do it correctly. So I start again a function with an image. And then I'm going to add my image. And now we are basically going to have to count a little bit. Um, first of all, I call the image. And then, as you can see, uh, we are inside the POU here called My Picture. I have one step up to the top of the device, and then I have the folder name, and then inside the folder name, my image. So after I put in image, I have again a space. Then I had one step up to my folder image, which is called image, and it has to be the correct name and then the name of my picture. So, now I do know that this picture is a little bit wider or larger than my screen can handle, so I will therefore change a bit on the width, and I can do that already here in my library file, and I will basically do this with, yeah, I reduce it to 50%. That should do the job. So, and here it's very important that where your image, when you call the image, 
you and you also want to work on the width or any other qualities of it, it has to be exactly over each other, otherwise you're going to have a problem. So with that, I'm pretty happy with the code that I generated. I'm not going to add anything else. I go and save the project. Hopefully it has transferred it. Let's go over to Codosys and check it again. I click on my library file. Good, I have the picture in here. I have some graphical design. And with my documentation, yeah, I have to be a bit patient. Maybe I can go over here instead. Click on it again. I go this way. Oh, I can use the link my picture and voila, there it is. Almost like magic. <laughs> Um, if you take one of our trainings, we will do a little bit more functionality and settings there uh, and also how you can play around with, with the documentation. Today we're just showing you two simple functions uh, of, of uh, documentation. Now, going back to the PowerPoint presentation, I also promised a little bit of a preview of our advanced webinar and uh, that it's about creating the online help because for us when we talk about documentation where we want to end up with all of this is basically that the documentation you provided is also now landing automatically in the online help. Now the online help that we have in Codus is actually pretty smart. So if we go back to the project file and uh, I'm inside my window here and let's say I do want to look for some documentation, but I'm not exactly sure what the library is called where I need this function from. I can just go into add library and I can add and search for for that function. And I know that we have something that is called XML get element and already something comes up. I double click on that one. I press OK and automatically Codesys gets me the right library where this function is installed. If I have a little look at it from this window, you can see that it's filled with different documentation. Function blocks, read XML files, it also contains a lot of pictures and some tables. So it's already an existing library with all this different type of information inside of it. Now the next thing I can do is that I can go into my PLC program. And what I can do is that I can go in and search for this, document, this specific function that I'm looking for. I do this by calling it hmm, XML element getter. And the next thing I do is that I go into F2. I press F2. I know that I need to look for some structured types, XML, XML utility. This is a function block. And here I find it XML get element. I press on it and I also do the semicolon. And if I now go back on this function, XML get element, and I press the F1, the online help is starting. And what it does is that it doesn't only, sorry, it's showing up in the wrong window. It doesn't only open the library, XML, the online help for this library, but it even opens it up in the correct way of this, in the rect, uh, correct spot where this function is um, actually sitting in the documentation. So you don't have to go through all the elements of, of one single documentation, but you can actually get directly to the function that you were looking at. And how you do this, how you create your documentation so that your users also can find it so easily in the online help, that is what we will work on in the, in the um, advanced webinar. So with that, I'm basically getting to the end of this presentation. A short review of what we've been talking about. We, we talked about the guidelines for creating good libraries. We talked about the guidelines for creating consistent documentation and why you should do it. We went through the different standard rules and we also had a snapshot into uh, why we're basically um, doing documentation, how you can include it in the online help. Now, I know this is just a drop in the ocean of all the information that you can find, of course, in our own online help in Codasys. We have lots of information. We will be posting uh, these webinars, or the webinar about the German and English one, uh, on our YouTube channel. Uh, I hope it's going to be in March, can be in April, but around that time frame. We have, ad we have planned the advanced webinar for April. Uh, more information coming to that about a little bit later on. But if you already are interested now, send a little email to product marketing and we can make sure that you can attend. 
And we, have also, uh, prov we are also going to provide a standard training for library management. This is going to be about a one-day full training uh, in June. And so if you're interested in that, it's going to be posted soon on our website, but you can also just send an, e an email to productmarketing.codasys.com for showing your interest. So we do hope we get a lot of people signing up for that training, especially if you want to get even more your hands dirty in, in library management and documentation. Okay, um, I'm basically two minutes over the time. I want to thank you all for attending this webinar. Very nice to have you here, and I hope to see many of you also in the advanced one. And our chat is still going to be open for a few more minutes where you can ask questions. So uh, with that, I am going to close my session. Stay along if you want to ask a few more questions or send us an email directly. And uh, thank you and have a good day and good evening.